Let's go checking out Portland Thorns versus Kansas City Current. Starting with Kansas City building up in this huge four shape with Wynn Brenner and Gautrat as the two deep midfielders and Kaiser higher between the lines. With Kansas City expecting their fullbacks to push out and their wide midfielder near side to drop whilst Hamilton is making an opposite run. This being a game Portland's 4 2 1 3 shape where they had the defenders tracking the forwards dropping off the line. And we see that as play progresses with here Klingenberg pressing towards Michelle Cooper who's dropped. Fortunately, Cooper is able to switch play and take advantage of how narrow Portland have become during their press. And so we get to see one of Kansas City's numerous transitions. Whilst Kansas City transitioned a lot, they were extremely wasteful with possession, um, often clearing the ball. So often, in fact, the Portland's 15 clearances, Kansas City had 41. To compound this, Kansas City often tried to hit Hamilton early from long goal kicks, which the Thorns easily regain possession from. And then we get to see the 4-2-1-3 shape for Portland out of possession versus the 2-3 shape for Kansas City. And so with Michelle Cooper dropping, we now have similar movement on this left-hand side with a forward dropping as well as also another player trying to run in behind as the Portland defenders try and track their player. With the movement of the midfielders, defenders tracking, Kansas City are looking to try and find a little bit of space or whether it's a forward or a central attacking midfielder who isn't being tracked as diligently and is able to then exploit the space left behind. Unfortunately, on this occasion, City are able to get in possession. And here, I just wanted to point out Dekila's positioning because she always pulls out towards that right-hand side out of position in preparation for a counter-attack. Fortunately for Current, they deflect the counter-attack and set up into their 4-2-3-1 shape, which initially engaged typically towards the halfway line rather than Portland's defensive third. Okay, so here I thought this was a better example of that defensive shape for Kansas City versus what was a 2-3 or a 2-4 for Portland. Uh, just note the position of these two players here. So Klinenberg, the left back, trying to stay high up on this left-hand side with Weaver often tucking inside, typically trying to position between the centre-back and full-back of Kansas City. The hope being that that will pin Fava and create more space for Klinenberg to be able to exploit higher up on this left-hand side. And then as Fava looks to try and engage Klinenberg as she pushes up, that will create space for Weaver to run in behind. Alternatively, you could have one of the wide centre midfielders try and exploit that space between the centre-back and full-back. So we start to see that here as play develops. We've got Klinenberg pushing higher up. We're getting that underlapping run, exploiting the space between the centre-back and full-back and a wide centre midfielder also pushing higher up, looking to exploit the gaps between the defence. With the numerous chances that Portland gave up, as Quinn see with their constant upward trajectory with their xg i struggle to argue that kansas city were anything but lucky in winning off their one particularly good chance although i do sometimes think that xg excludes some key statistics for example this opportunity in the fourth minute i thought it was worth just pointing out klinenberg again the left back but later in the game she's essentially the left winger and poses a serious crossing and creative threat i guess to try and highlight that we look here at at the 56th minute where of course we start with Kansas City having a transitional play and then Portland having their transitional play um, and just note the killer's position she loved to pull out towards this right hand side and then unfortunately the killer's chance is blocked and we eventually get the ball cycled out towards Klinberg on the left hand side and we see them set up into what looks like a 3-2 shape although I would say that really most of the players coming down this left hand side with Kuiker typically turned tucking in, allowing Klingenberg to position as that left winger. This being against essentially a 4-1, 4-1 here by Kansas City or a 4-5-1. Unfortunately, Klingenberg's cross um, is defended, but I think this is just a great example of Portland's um, attacking because we get to see player on the edge of the box, but then also players attacking the near post, center, and then also the far post. Unfortunately, uh, the chance is defended. Moving on to the 46th minute, we have Kansas City building up in a 2-3 shape but now they're up against what is essentially a 4-3-1-2 or a 4-3-3 press by Portland Thorns but with a really narrow forward line 
So basically Reyes and Weaver play extremely close to their killer and make it very difficult to pass into the central area. Um, against this, Curran are still looking to try and have their wide midfielder drop with the centre forward Hamilton running in behind as Portland's defenders are tracking those movements. Of course now with greater pressure higher up the pitch, Portland are able to get on the ball and we see Kansas City try and opportunistically press here higher up the pitch due to Portland's passbacks. Unfortunately, the Portland attack is tame, but we get to see that 4-3-1-2 press that I mentioned with Reyes and Weave extremely narrow again with uh, their killer, trying to make this pass into Gotrat unfeasible. And just as with that earlier attack by Kansas City, we see Portland trying to press towards the touchline and commit their forwards to the near side. With all that pressure, Portland are able to regain possession and we see the flexibility now in their forwards positioning. We've got Reyes still central from the earlier press. We've got the killer pulling out to her right hand side. Favorite position again. We've got Kuik pulling into that right CDM position, as well as also Klinenberg trying to get higher up. And then the likes of Muitre, Kofi, etc., playing on the edge of the box, playing between the lines, looking to try and play those clever through balls through or over the Kansas City defense. Moving on to the 51st minute, we've got what is a 2-3 or a 2-4 deep build up versus Kansas City's 4-2-3-1. Here we're going to have Porter and Kofi sharing the CDM role with Kofi essentially as the transitory CDM, helping to beat the press. So you can see Kofi dropping as the play progresses. Actually, she sometimes dropped to left back two to allow Klinberg to push as high as possible on that left hand side. Okay, so we end up seeing that Porter vacates the CDM role, allowing Coffee to drop into the CDM role instead. And now she's not being marked, or not at least not as tightly, and that allows them to be able to progress a little bit more easily. Unfortunately, the attack breaks down with the next long ball forward. And I just want to also mention the 442 pressing shape that Kansas City moved into uh, later in the game. See this scenario in the 72nd minute. The defensive substitution of ball later in the game was probably crucial given how often Kansas gifted Portland possession. Looking at Kansas City's corner kicks, they had a few routines. You have three in the six yard box, three on the edge of the six yard box or by the penalty spot, and then two on the edge. The three on the penalty spot are looking to run towards the near post, center and far post and one of those in the six yard box is going to look to run towards the near post. For outward swinging, they instead have just two in the six yard box and four running from the back post and options on the edge of the box again. And they also mixed it up with a short corner kick routine with a deep cross towards the back post. And then looking at Portland's corner kicks, there was a lot of variety, but ultimately there were four or more in the box. Here we have an extra player on the back post and we will also be joined by the faux short option here. And then we have two on the edge of the box. Whilst there was a lot of variety in the positioning of these players, Players. ultimately the ball is typically played towards the back post so here we have the 64th minute again we've absolutely overloaded the box we've got two on the edge and we're going to aim towards the back post and with that thanks for watching if you've enjoyed this video consider sharing it on social media giving this video a thumbs up commenting on how you'd like me to improve my videos as it goes a long way with that we're out